So I won't be talking about too much today, but everything you're looking for can be found in these thumbnails and timestamps and everything you need to know. So hopefully you can find what you're looking for out working. Okay. So when it comes to PlayStation 5 and PlayStation VR, I have good news and I have bad news. Good news is that Jim Ryan, the CEO of PlayStation, has said in a recent interview that he wants to push the transition towards the PlayStation 5 even more than they have seen at previous paper. So that being the case, one of the biggest things we can see and expect over the next 12 to 13 months is a hike in production as well as a likely a slightly lower price point than was originally projected. There have been estimates that up, up to this point, there have been estimates that the upcoming system would be sitting around $500 at launch. However, with this new information, it's very possible that this upcoming system could be as low as $400, maybe even less. But I, I personally think that going below $400 for a launch price would be expecting too much at this point. <clears throat> as uh, $400 was the same price that we saw the PlayStation 4 launch for. Uh, and one other thing that we may be able to look forward to is that as part of next year's system launch, the existing VR hardware will be compatible with it, which is good for those of you that <clears throat> do want another Black Friday deal to look forward to, as Target is unveiling their own five-game bundle along with the headset and camera, all for $200. <clears throat> going to include PlayStation VR Worlds, Skyrim and VR, Astrobot Rescue, Resident Evil 7, and every <clears throat> everybody's golf in VR. Five games, the headset and the camera, all for $200. Because this is one of uh because this is one of Sony's higher end products we may be able to see this launch other big box stores as well, such as Best Buy and Walmart just But the bad news that comes along with all that is that Sony is a little lacking as far as first party VR output. So one of the, while I can't say anything for possible expectations like uh, first party VR projects. What we may be able to see is strong discounts going into the next major. So hopefully we have something to look forward to over the next month and a half or maybe even longer depending on how long this route in First party or well, I can't say third party because we we are expecting Iron Man in VR in February, but that's still quite a ways away. Let's say for this next story that you guys are purists or are concerned about your privacy or don't want to give. Facebook too much of your money. Now there is an option for you guys to get your own discounted eight five heads. And I mean the OG five. The very first 2016 models. Well now selling certified owned five systems for $400. The difference between getting a certified pre-owned versus a regular pre-owned off say eBay or Amazon or what, that the ones that HP is selling 
have been inspected for cosmetic wear as well as functioning parts. So in the event that, that the headset you get from them, the certified pre-owned headset you get from them is going to include the two base stations and trackers, as well as the headset itself, all for, all for $400, no less. If that doesn't work, then you can yell at HTC saying they sold you a defective product. That is a primary difference between eBay and HTC's certified pre -up. You can find that link in the description down below if you want to get your very own. Now, I talked a little bit about Google Stadia when they made a debut launch video back in June and basically compared it to PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold, just minus the physical console. Uh, while they are already known to be competing with PlayStation Now and Xbox X Cloud, I guess, they may getting another new editor soon. As Valve is working on a new service called Steam Cloud Gaming, according to a partner site code update. Those partners do need to sign an addendum to their term, but in some sort of preview of what that platform is going to look like very soon. Uh, one of the biggest things that tries to support this argument, or this claim rather, is that on the Steam API, there are quite a few parts that already exist, like friends lists, connecting with those friends, accessing and purchasing games off of an existing library, and being able to access that software from any any existing only difference between Steam's existing API and this cloud gaming service is the act of downloading the game rather than streaming them. So because that is well, I, I can't really say that's a minor change, but Compared to the number of things that Stadia need to have ironed out in preparation for their, their full launch next year, uh, that simple that transition is a relatively simple. So chances are we may be, like I said, we may be seeing a preview of that very soon. Good news, everyone! Play Beat Saber. Play Super Hot VR. Well, then, guess what? Web VR is now available. You can find it on all major, well, except for PlayStation VR, digital stores, but not on Vive for Infinity. This game you can find for $25, and although a DLC does exist, that is Surely the soundtrack, none of that is playable in it's just just music. Thirteen dollars of music. Uh, this game plays just like you would expect, a mix between Beat Saber and Super Hot to run. Uh, you run according to a rhythm and you're on track and as long as you're able to match the rhythm of the sounds, you're more than likely going to the targets that come up. Because just like in Beat Saber, those people are going to match the notes of some kind when you're playing through the level. That makes sense. So hopefully you guys are able to enjoy that if thanks to. Uh, like I said, it is not available on the PlayStation 
are yet. However, Cloudhead Games is in fact working on a PSVR edition of that game. So hopefully at some point, fingers crossed, we will be able to play it too. Finally, one of the big things that adds is sustainability and length game's lifespan is custom levels of some kind. The biggest ones I could think of right off the top of my head are Beat Saber for Hot VR and of course Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I know mods aren't quite the same thing as custom levels or vice versa, but I'm sure you get my point. Those custom levels add a little bit more spice to the game as well as giving you a little bit more, uh, how shall I say, personality to the game that fits you rather than a generic audience. That is one of the things that Resolution Games is aiming to achieve with the new Angry Birds VR game, which is available on all major VR platforms. They have included a level editor mode specifically for the game. Free up, I believe it is. So hopefully, those of you who are taking the time to play the game, enjoying it, are able to do so a little bit more with that new level editor. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I still need to get around to recording an actual outro thing. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, come back next week and check out another episode. Bye.